This lesson is titled Areas and Distances. You can easily calculate the exact area under part of a line parallel to the x-axis, but it's not so easy to calculate the exact area under part of a curve. So for example, here's a, a line parallel to the x-axis. If we pick a starting and ending point, we can calculate the exact area under that line. It's because it, a rectangular area we're very good at calculating. But if we had some curve, and then we're trying to calculate the area under the curve between these two s points, it would be very difficult to do that exactly. You can use rectangles to estimate the area under a curve and analyze the data. So for example, here's a set of rectangles uh, checking the area between 0 and 20. These are inscribed rectangles. They're completely under the curve. This approximation would come out less than the actual area because there's all this area here that we're really not measuring. You can also look at circumscribed rectangles, which are partially above the curve. This turns out to be an overestimate because we've got all this area here that's really not under the curve. You can use summation notation to represent the area of a series of rectangles and to approximate the area under the curve f of x. We're going to let a sub n represent the x value of a point on the base of the nth rectangle. Here's that summation notation. The area equals the sum from n equals 1 to b of our widths times all of our f of x's, or a sub n's. These will represent heights. So b is the number of rectangles that we're looking at. w is the width of each rectangle. It's, it's nice if we keep that uniform. And f of a sub n is the height of the nth rectangle. So here's an example. We're going to use the given rectangles to estimate the area under the curve. This is very similar to something that we did back in Algebra 2. Again, to find that area, we're just going to add up all the rectangles. That's what this formula says. The area is equal to the sum of all these rectangular areas, widths times height of each one of them. So there are five rectangles. The width of each rectangle is 1. We can check that out here. It goes from 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and so on. So the width of each one is 1. The heights are the only thing different for each rectangle. So I have 1 times 70 for the first rectangle, 1 times 62 for the second rectangle. It's a little bit of estimation here. We don't know exactly what height that is, so we've, uh, we've uh, estimated it to be 62. And so on to the last rectangle, 1 times 35. So this is a, a pretty basic calculation. We're getting an, an estimate of about 270 square units. Realize that this would be an underestimate because we're using inscribed rectangles. In this example, we're going to write and evaluate a sum to estimate the area under the curve for the domain from 0 to 2, inclusive. We're going to use inscribed rectangles of one unit wide, and we're also going to use circumscribed rectangles of one unit wide. The function is 1 half x squared. So let's take a look at that function. Actually, we don't even need to graph it. We've got the function. We can do it this way. <laughs> if the rectangles are one unit wide, how many rectangles are there going to be from 0 to 2? Well, we'll have 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. That's only two rectangles. The width of each rectangle is 1, and we just need to figure out the height of each rectangle. Well, let's go ahead and sketch these rectangles in here so we can see this. So our first rectangle would be go from 0 to 1, well, I, if I keep it inscribed, it's not going to have any height. It's just going to be flat. My second rectangle would come up to here and then over and down. So I'm really gonna, only going to have one rectangle that has any area there. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate this. Notice that when uh, x is 1, when a sub n is 1, I have a height of 0. When a sub n is 2, I have a height of 4, right? 4 times a half would be 2. Actually, but let's look at that again. Because I'm not looking at this, this end. I'm looking at this end. So 0, if I plug in 0, I get 0 height. That makes sense with what I'm looking at. If I plug in 1, I get a half height. That makes sense with what I'm looking at. I have to plug in the point that would uh, be on the, on the curve here. So that's at, at 1 comma a half and 0 comma 0. So I'm going to get this sum, 1 comma 0, 0 high, plus 1 comma half, half high. So I'm getting a half a square unit. If I circumscribe these rectangles, 
this is where it looks a little different. From one, it'll come up and go over. And from two, it'll come up and go over. So again, let's take a look here. I'm going to be plugging in one, I get a half. I'm going to be plugging in uh, two, and I'll be getting two. So that doesn't seem like my rectangle went quite high enough here. I didn't quite get that sketch perfectly, but hopefully you get the idea. So I've got one times a half for my first rectangle, one times two for my second rectangle, and the sum there would be two and a half square units. Again, that would be an overestimate because I use circumscribed rectangles. Here's another example. We're going to do the same thing with y equals negative x squared plus 5. We're doing one unit wide again, so we have two rectangles. Let's go ahead and look at the graph and try to sketch these two rectangles. So this first rectangle, we're going inscribed from 0 to 1. It's going to come straight up and come over. There's my first rectangle, and my second rectangle would come straight up and straight over. So let's just look here. When x is 1, I would get a height of 4, and that's what it looks like here. When x is 2, I would get a height of 1, and that's what it looks like here. So I've got widths of 1 every time. One time I've got a height of 4, one time I've got a height of 1. Let's go ahead and look at the calculation. That's going to give me an area of five square units. If I use circumscribed rectangles, that means I can go outside here. So I'm going to come all the way up, all the way over and down. That's my first rectangle. And my second rectangle would come all the way here, over and down. Okay, and let's check heights. This is going to be at zero, so that'll give me a height of five. This is going to be at, uh, at one. That'll give me a height of 4 when I substitute those values in for x. Go ahead and bring up the calculation. Let's again look at those rectangles. 1 times 5 for the first rectangle, 1 times 4 for the second rectangle gives us a area of 9 square units. Our overestimate is 9 square units. Here's a you try. You go ahead and try this. Find us an inscribed rectangle and uh, area and a circumscribed rectangle area. Okay, here's the graph. If we do inscribed, we have to stay all below. So we have our first rectangle and our second rectangle. First rectangle is how high? Well, that's one high. Plug in zero, I get one. My second rectangle is too high. If I plug in one, I get two. So I have a pretty simple calculation here. One times one, and one times two, there's the rectangles again, for an area of three square units. If we go circumscribed rectangles, that means I can go higher, go outside the shape, and then come down. And then we'll go outside the shape all the way up to here where we hit a corner point. Notice how we're hitting corner points all the time, whether we're inscribed or circumscribed. We're just putting a corner on the triangle, or on the shape, I should say. It's not a triangle. There's not a triangle in sight on the shape. So let's check heights here real quick. I see a height of 2. I see a height of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when I plug in, z let's see, if I plug in 1, I get 2. If I plug in 2, I get 5. That works out good the arithmetic matches the diagram. That's always good when that happens. So here comes the function. There's our calculation. Again, you can compare that with what we saw in the graph. And our overestimate is going to be 7 square units. In this example, we're going to use rectangles to estimate the area under the parabola from y equals x squared from 0 to 1. Notice our scale here. This is 1 all the way out here. We're going to use uh, four rectangles. So I think this one's all scripted here in PowerPoint. So let's, let's take a look. We're using circumscribed rectangles, a choice we made.
and there we go. So when uh, x is 1, I've got a height of 1. When x is 2, I've got a height of 4. 3 gives me a height of, oh, wait a minute, I don't have 1. I have 1 quarter. I have a height of 1 eighth. When x is 1, I have a height of 1 all the way here. Notice the scale here is also by quarters. So here we go. My delta x is the width of each rectangle. Notice each rectangle, you can kind of see it here. That each is a quarter wide, but if, if you can't see it, you can always take your, um, your distance that you're finding an area between 0 and 1. Just take the, the big one minus the small one and divide by how many rectangles you're using, and that'll tell you how wide each one is. So 1 fourth wide. So my area is 1 fourth times my height for the first rectangle plus 1 fourth times my height for the second rectangle and so on, which gives me a height of 15 30 seconds or approximately the decimal there. That's our learning target for this lesson. I'll see you in class.